I want to say a few words about accepting the present moment, but not the benzo crisis. So what do I mean by that? Accepting the current moment, but not benzo crisis. All right. So let's begin with uh, the current moment. The current moment is right now, obviously. It's all we ever have. Now, the problem with our mind is that it operates in time and thoughts. Thoughts operate uh, instinctively to time, whether it be the past, dwelling on the past, thinking of the past, remembering the past, or it's dwelling on the future. And it could be anything as uh, soon as we're dwelling on what we're going to eat that night, uh, how we're going to sleep, what we're going to do, an uh, upcoming uh, doctor's appointment, all the way to retirement, all the way to our deathbed. We live in this future projection. We dwell in this past projection, and neither are real. And when we look at the past, we are almost certainly reframing and repainting everything through you know, the lenses of rose-colored glasses. We romanticize the past. I mean, it's, and I didn't realize that until I got older, you know, and you would hear stories about something that happened, or you might look back on a relationship or a job or a career or this or that, and, and you just, we always remember it somehow being brighter. It's, it's, it's always remembered in technicolor, and we sort of gloss over all the, the bad stuff that maybe came with it, the reality of it. I mean, why is that? Why do we sort of roman, romanticize the past? And I think it's because it's gone, and we can't get it back. And I think there's this instinct to sort of, uh, you know, see value in the things that you can't get back anymore. You can't go back to your 20s. You can't go back to high school. You can't go back to college, perhaps, you know, uh, or that career or that relationship or whatever it is that we're romanticizing. So therefore, it becomes, you know, um, more beautiful to us in a sense. But it's not an accurate perception because... Again, we're just looking at the best parts of it, and we're amplifying those parts. So, and my point is, if you could go back to the past, if you're dwelling on the past, chances are you would actually be shocked at how uncomfortable you probably were back then, you know? But that's the way it looks when you're going through benzo, especially because this current moment is so terrible, it's the last place you want to be. So it's sort of feeds that instinct to drive away in your mind, you know, to drive back to the past or drive to the future. And though now we look at the future, and what is the future? The future is, again, this projection that's not happened, not even certain it's going to happen, at least not in the way that we usually are thinking about the future. <clears throat> but there we are, we dwell in the past and we live in the future, and the whole time we're escaping the now. And this is the same for everybody, and it's always been this way for everybody. But again, the benzo mechanism just amplifies this situation because we don't want to be in the now because the now is suffering. So that might seem like an escape or even a distraction to somehow get in your mind and drive away from this current moment and think you're going to escape it. <clears throat> but what's really happening is we're amplifying the worst type of uh, distractions in our mind, you know, because we're never going back and you know, just sort of living in this mental projection of this great, wonderful time of our life. No, it's it's dwelling on the past, our mistakes, how do we get here, why are we here, uh, meaning the benzo withdrawal situation, how did I get on benzos, damn it, we're, we're beating ourselves up over it. Or we're projecting the future, you know, a future of, I don't know if I'm going to, if I'm going to make it, I don't know if I'm going to get better. I don't know if I'm going to work again. I don't know about my if my relationship's going to survive this thing. You know, it's it's all fear based, and in the past, it's almost always sadness based. It's not fear because the past has already happened, but we're sad about things. God, I wish I could go back to that. Oh, I remember when I my first marriage, and I remember this job and this. Uh, you know, we're we're sad in the past and we're anxious of the future. So this instinct to sort of escape this moment of benzo suffering, so we can be sad in the past or anxious in the future, it's a mistake. It's a fallacy. It's, it's, it's an irrational thought. You know, it's a maladaptive coping mechanism, I guess you could say, that we will try to do something that we think is going to alleviate something that brings us more suffering, essentially. So again, accepting the present moment, not the benzo crisis. When I say accept the moment, what I'm telling you is a way to stay present. 
Because the more you deny the moment, the more you push the moment away, well, of course your mind's going to indulge in the past and the future and going to get swept up in your thoughts and they're going to start ruminating. Those thoughts are going to spin like a hurricane and they're going to gain speed and more speed and more speed. So the present moment is the best thing you can do. I mean, be distracted in the present moment, whether it's gar- gardening or watching a comedy film or spending time with, a, with your loved ones or uh, making a list for things you're going to do in the future when you're better. All these things are better than dwelling on the past or worrying about a future that's uncertain, that's undecided. So we have to stay in the moment uh, to find some kind of sanity through this thing. you know. Even if we're distracted, be distracted in the moment. That's my point on that. Now, accept the moment means, I mean, to be in the moment is to accept the moment. And that's the difficult part because it's not as simple as just you're watching this video, you're conscious right now, you're okay, I'm in the moment. But this is kind of a, dis- a distraction, a good distraction, <clears throat> albeit. Um, but the present moment, uh, we have to accept our condition. We have to go, look, this is it. I don't know if I'm going to get better. Future un- uncertain. Past already gone. I don't know if I'm getting going to get better. Overwhelmingly, it looks like the odds say I am going to get better, so I'm going to have some faith in that. But you know what? This is it. This is where I'm at. I'm on this journey. I often like to say it's like we've been dropped off in a jungle and we have to walk out. Nobody's coming for us. We have to walk out a little, you know, even if a few steps every day, even if we crawl on our elbows, we have to get out of this jungle. So we go back to the moment and we accept the fact that this is what we have before us. We have this big, arduous task before us, this big, big challenge. Now, what we don't have to accept, and this is distinctly different, guys, is... Uh, the benzo crisis. When you, when I say accept the moment, I don't mean accept your suffering in a sense of, oh, well, I'm suffering. This is it. I'm not saying accept the crisis. Fight the crisis. Do everything you can to get out of this benzo crisis. You know, do your exposure. Do your exercise. Focus on healthy patterns that will promote sleep, diet, lifestyle changes, coping mechanism for your panic attacks, you know, gradual systemic uh, systematic desensitization for things like driving phobias and such. Uh, you, you know, and there's different phases in the benzo uh, recovery uh, process because you know one is of course the just the withdrawal, which is almost impossible to do them near anything, and then you start to kind of come out of that. Your symptoms start to decrease, but you're still pretty heavy, and it's it's really hard from there to really walk the rest of the way out of the forest. But that's where most of the work really happens. They sort of you you endure the storm and then you walk out. Uh, again, even if you're crawling on your elbows. So I'm not telling you to accept the benzo crisis. And this is very important. I'm not just rambling here. Uh, this is important because if you don't know the difference, then you won't accept the moment because you'll mistake accepting the moment for accepting this terrible condition. And of course you shouldn't do that. You shouldn't just accept it. You should surrender to the currents of the things that are out of your hands. But everything else you should do. In fact, that's always been my message, is to do more, to do more, to fight this thing. You know, the, the cover of my book has boxing gloves on it because it's a fight or flight uh, kind of war we're in. And I'm telling everybody, fight this thing. Don't lay down. Don't give up. Fight it. Uh, part of that fight is accepting this present moment. It's accepting, okay, I've been dropped off in the woods or this, this crazy forest. There's tigers everywhere. I have to get the hell out of here. Uh, you accept that, but you don't surrender to it. It's not a. Uh, it's not just a. Okay, I'm in the jungle. I guess I'll just die here, <laughs> right? So, hopefully that helps with some perspective here. Hey everyone, thanks for watching and listening. Please click the like and subscribe button if you enjoyed the content, and be sure to check out my book on Amazon, The Powers Manual: Benzo Guide to Recovery.